Hey everyone and welcome back to another Shadowlands video. So look, if you watched yesterday's video, then you're going to know, right, that I am generally very excited for the Shadowlands test. A commitment has been made by Blizzard to pre-made template characters for testing. A commitment has been made for more endgame testing than in the past. The class changes actually seem like they're going to be quite robust, and for those reasons and many other things like PvP vendors and a lot of fundamental improvements to the game, I am very excited, and I do think this expansion will be a step forward in so many regards. Therefore, I am a little bit sad that today's video covers my largest worry for the expansion, the strong link between covenants and class mechanics. I had dearly hoped that Blizzard would have reconsidered this since their BlizzCon presentation, but it does appear that they are sticking by their guns. In almost every reply to my tweets and to developers' tweets around this subject, people have said that this, the topic of this video, is their largest concern. The same thing is topping Reddit and it is flooding forums. I think it's safe to say that this is the most important thing to get right in this expansion. Now, all this stuff is outlined via a blog post that Blizzard did that talks about the current state of Covenant abilities. It gives us a far more complete picture of things, some good, some less good. And what I would say to Blizzard, is that the downsides of this system, people's concerns, will not be captured in alpha and beta testing. People will be using throwaway template characters. It's not a real-world scenario, and that means that the pros and the cons of the hard choices that people will have to make are not present. Therefore, we can only weigh those things up with our intuition. My intuition is that this, if it goes live as it seems it may, will be the Azerite gear of Shadowlands. Of course, we all want this expansion to be as good as it possibly can be. We all want World of Warcraft to rise up to new heights. We want the developers to succeed. There is zero room in this channel for people who wish the devs ill or, you know, who just wish the game ill for no good reason just because they're angry. This is all about maximally honest and transparent feedback with the only goal being to help the game be better. We cannot have another BFA. It doesn't seem like we will, but this is a lingering topic of concern. First up, patrons, thank you. We've got podcast versions of our two upcoming videos, Lore and TBC Episode 3, on the way to you right now. And of course, it is Priest Pin Pre-Order Month. That was a bit of a tongue twister. It's also Troll Month, so you'll get this sweet art, plus, you know, the Snored. It's a snake, a sword, and a sticker. And also, these two specials, gorgeous landscapes. Man, our game team just blows me away with everything that they do. So, if you want to support us, get some uh, sweet loot, early access to videos, vlogs. I mean, now that the ad revenue has half because of the ongoing situation, you guys are vital, and every one of the team thanks you a whole bunch. Now, this is our first alpha with a team that's more than just me and Connell. So, we aim to make more content and we aim to put more time into developer feedback. This video is an example of that, where one of us, Matt, has been working on a survey that we will be passing on to the devs as best we can. You'll find that survey below. Please answer it honestly based on your own first principles-based reading of this situation. And afterwards, do come back because if you click off a video via link and then don't return, YouTube actually considers that to be a closed session, and uh, that means that they will then squish that video via the algorithm. So, unfortunate. But with that... Let us begin. Let's get stuck into it. I'm going to demonstrate this with the class that I mained in 8.3, the Demon Hunter. Right now, we know of its Kyrian, Venthyr, and Night Fae abilities. You will get these during leveling, and you will get one of them permanently at endgame once you actually side with that covenant. Now, Blizzard have said that they don't really want you to be switching covenants on a regular basis, and that their intent is that this really is a major decision, one that you will want to stick with. Switching at endgame is possible, but Blizzard said at BlizzCon that it would not be ideal and would come at a cost. So, the Kyrian ability is a sort of ground cleave, right? It puts runes in front of you on the ground, and then those runes explode. They do damage, and they shatter lesser soul frags. So, seemingly not that good for single target, but great for AoE. It looks like a really good Mythic Plus dungeon pick for mass pulls. Then, Venthyr have Sinful Brand. This reduces an enemy's melee casting speed and does shadow damage um, over time, but... If you activate uh, Metamorphosis, your big cooldown, you apply it to all nearby enemies. So, it's a bit more of a single target baseline, but it does provide a strong AoE cooldown and usefulness for PvP. 
Both it and the Kyrian one I think would be good for tanking because of the soul frags and the slowed melee damage. Then moving on to the Night Fae ability, I, I really think it's cool. So it's a charge that inflicts nature damage and roots the enemy. You will then generate more resources from Demon's Bite and Shear, which is of course pretty good for DPS and tanking. And then every 30 seconds, you can use that ability again to, regardless of line of sight, teleport behind that target. That is a cool ability. It seems incredible for PvP. I really like the idea of playing with it. And because it's got the resource generation mechanic, I think I'd enjoy it a lot because I really do like it when the classes speed up a little bit. But there's a problem here. I like the Night Fae ability. I think it sounds really fun. I also love their aesthetics. Night Fae is a clear choice for me. But the thing is, the Venthyr and Kyrian abilities seem way better for Mythic Plus or ad-based uh, boss fights. Now, for the Night Fae ability to keep up with the Kyrian one in AoE, it would have to be tuned to do absurd damage, which would then make it overpowered in a single target situation. Blizzard clearly will not be able to balance it like that, it just won't work. Additionally, I'd like to dabble in PvP every now and then because the gearing makes sense now. So for that, Night Fae seems like a clear choice but not the clear choice for other types of content. You see, Blizzard have designed a game with a reward system where I do have to care about this performance. If I want to push a Mythic Plus key to get a better weekly uh, bit of loot, well, if I have an ability choice that is 10% better in a Mythic Plus AoE scenario, and then all three DPS members of the party have got to optimize similarly, we will have a far, far better chance of beating that harder content that we want to beat that the game incentivizes us to beat but this system goes against that by locking those choices down. It basically goes against the way they've designed the end game progression of WoW. Now, if this was an action RPG, if this was classic WoW or TBC or something like that, then I actually would agree with the dev's direction on this a little bit more, right? Like making the choice matter a bit more mechanically. But as I've said before, World of Warcraft, like it or not, is primarily designed as an end game gameplay focused experience. Certainly that's what Legion and BFA have shown us with the dev's direction. But the thing is, there's yet another angle here, because I've only thus far covered, like, one set of class abilities, okay? But each Covenant also has another ability that everyone gets, and we now know all of them in their current iteration. So, Kyrians get a steward who can bring them a file that uh, restores health and removes all curses, diseases, um, prisons, or poisons even, and uh, bleeds. Now, this steward can also then give you a selection of amenities, like, once per day each, which seems pretty handy. Then, the Vanthyr, they can do basically a shadow step blink to a location, then the Necrolords have got an ability that actually, <laughs> they basically make a shield that prevents damage equal to a portion of their max health, but if they use that ability near a corpse, the shield is larger. Then finally, the Night Fae can turn into a forest creature with increased movement speed. Generally speaking, it lasts for a short duration, kind of just like a movement CD, but it lasts indefinitely in rest areas. So with those covered, it now brings us to Blizzard's justification of this system. And that is that the Covenant choices are big, they're holistic, it's a whole big thing. It's not just one ability, it's two of them, plus a soulbind progression. So the idea here is that the pros and the cons of any single element of that are balanced out by the amount of stuff, the sheer quantity tied to the Covenant choice. And that it's really the type of choice that can't be captured in a sim. Well, I'll say this, I'm a DPS playing a simple class, the Demon Hunter, and I enjoy raid mechanics. So the Night Fae gives me an extra movement ability, and that seems perfect, even though, yeah, I have a lot of movement anyway. But if I wanted to PvP, then maybe the Carrion's Cleanse Potion would be pretty good. If I was tanking in my other spec, well, I'd have a large health pool, and that would make the Necrolord ability seem even more enticing for me. So depending on what spec I would want to play, there are different Covenant General abilities that I would want to have. And then, depending on what content I actually want to do, well, there's also different Covenant general abilities that I'd want to have. And then, depending on my spec and the content that I'm doing, well, there are different Covenant class abilities that I would want to have access to. Now, I expect this to be quite a frustrating decision because it never seems like it'll be that interesting. There appears to be clear choices for most scenarios. It sort of, to me, feels like if this was, say, MOP, getting a new talent row, but then having massive restrictions on your use of that talent row. Fantasy-wise, Night Fae is 100% something that I really like. I love the movement abilities. I would actually enjoy collecting the various different skins for my movement ability. I think its Demon Hunter ability is really cool as well. But if I wanted to tank or to do Mythic Plus or something else, 
Well, there are times where I would feel bad about that choice, the choice that I want to make based off the fantasy. And that is something that does not make me excited. It certainly does not feel to me like I would have a rich selection of options to choose from. Rather, it makes me feel like I've got a large quantity of arbitrary restrictions to get around. And that doesn't feel good, it feels punitive. So to be clear though, we don't have access to soul binds yet. Now soul binds are basically like a set of talent trees you get per covenant. Now these soul binds could balance it out. So let's just say the Kyrian Demon Hunter ability, it seems useless in PvP. So will there be a Kyrian soul bind that is PvP focused to balance that out? We don't know. Blizzard have not told us what their intent is there. And we absolutely need to know that. We need more communication on what the soul binds are. It really should have been in that post that they just made. But what I will say is this, right? What if, as we level up and we help the various covenants, we grant their favor? Then, the Arbiter and the Covenant leaders sort of pick up on this, and through the power of the Arbiter being a special figure of the Shadowlands, we then get access to a new customization option. And from there, we get to choose, as if it was a talent, which covenants, like, spell kit we wish to use, and then we could select a Soulbind. Now, while that power would be granted to us by the Covenant, and then the selection would be enabled by the lore of the Arbiter, we would still choose a Covenant to actually champion, as is Blizzard's plan. And maybe through our connection to Azeroth, and perhaps us being the champion of the Arbiter, we could then gain the power to choose which Covenant's kit we'd actually want to use. I mean, as an example, you could do cool things here. If you use the Venthyr power near a denizen of Bastion, then maybe they could voice being uncomfortable or weirded out by it. There's still room to have that player agency in what kit they want to use, and to still have a very immersive narrative, just sort of fantasy experience. And I really do think that a hybrid solution of that, well, I think it would cap the downsides, and I think it would leave the upsides uncapped, right? So it would remove blockers to core expansion content enjoyment, and well, therefore, by removing that, you could just enjoy all the expansion content as much as you wish. I think that would be great. And I mean, the Covenants, they're going to have great transmog, great mounts, and likely a bunch of other great stuff. So that Covenant choice would still matter a lot for your character's identity and fantasy. Past this, there is one other mild concern, right? So when Mop released and it gave us a new talent row, well, each spec got three talents. But here, each class just gets a new ability. So like with Azerite Essences, because it's class-based, these often don't have a great synergy with core uh, spec mechanics. Now, in BFA with the Essences, it kind of meant that they were just bolt-ons to use. And that could happen again here, but I would say this. The same actually does apply for some of the less interesting artifact weapons in some cases, and also we've yet to see the unpruning, and that could really matter for the classes. Indeed, that's actually why I'm not doing a full class rundown in this video. I think we really need to see what the class changes are before we can actually see how these abilities will fit into the quality of the class gameplay, and that's why this video is far more about the choice and what's going on there. Now, I do want to end this video by being as fair to the devs as I can. And I do understand what they're going for here, and I, you know, I do appreciate that, right? And yes, getting stuff like this right is really hard, and I have made those mistakes as well. And when I did, I basically wasted a year of our game team budget. That's a very big, expensive mistake for someone to make in the position that I was in. So I very much get it, right? When you are in the trenches of implementation, uh, especially if you're coding or doing stuff like that, it's really hard to get a, you know, a bird's eye view of the overall situation. And like, when you're in that situation, you know, there are things that after the fact seem like they should have been so clear, but when you're sitting there and you are coding a new mechanic or you're working in that design and you're really focused in on that, it is hard to see the broader picture. And that is something that every developer across the planet experiences. And that is something that if we move past the game side of things, even in tech companies or just anywhere where people are working on creative things, that's what it ends up like. It is really hard when you are in the trenches of actually trying to implement an idea it is so hard to see other aspects of it. And that's why, you know, Blizzard talking about this and doing an alpha and a beta is a really good thing. And if I actually look at what a Blizzard alpha is, I'm going to be real with you. They are pretty darn good. What we're used to for an alpha or a beta in the industry is, you know, you got to play a few maps of a new game's multiplayer mode and, you know, it's, it's that. 
But if you look at these ones, what Blizzard do, well, they're rolling this out slowly, zone by zone. They are making character templates so we can do targeted testing of specific features. They're only calling it beta once all the content is there. They really do the, I'd say, as close to the real deal as you can possibly do for an alpha and beta testing process. And in the past, it's worked to great success. Less so with Battle for Azeroth. Humongously less so. Let us just hope that that is a blip. Certainly, based on what Blizzard have said, they intend this test to be, and the lines in the sand that they drew, that I talked about yesterday, it does seem like their approach is in the right direction here. And that's why, when it comes to topics like this, we've got to be completely transparent, completely honest, and just say what we think. And that's what this is all about. So, let me know what do you think. There is literally a survey for you to do. So, if you do that, of course, please click back to this channel and just, like, watch another video. Or even just go back to YouTube and watch something else. Just tap back to this video and just, you know, click on someone else's video. It's literally just so that the session time isn't ended. Uh, it's really annoying that that's a restriction I've kind of got to play around. When one of the things I really want to do is to be able to solicit great feedback from you. And then hopefully pass it on and boil it down into a way that it's actually useful for the devs. So yeah, there, there's that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.